Hello everyone. Um, we are continuing to our Death Adders on the Floor series with uh, two Papua New Guinea Death Adders. Uh, these are the smooth scale Death Adders from Papua New Guinea, the Acanthophus Lavis. And these are a little hard to film. Because they are so aggressive snakes. I'm trying to do my best to film them for you. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to film it properly with feeding and everything. Because again, they are super aggressive. Okay, aggressive may be a harsh term, but they are super defensive. And they are really hard to... Not to startle, let's say. Okay, here you can see the female and from the body you can easily see that she is super gravid or pregnant um, and I'm expecting her to drop you know anytime between June and July so we are really close now. Um, these death adders they come from Papua New Guinea as I explained um, from the Aseki region of the island state and they are um, they are venomous quite potent as their mainland cousins that I have shown so far um, however in addition to that they are really really trigger happy I mean all that others are trigger happy in a sense they will all um, respond to still lie as they are ambush predators As you have seen from my uh, different videos, that that others will not hesitate to bite if you get into their strike range. However, on top of that, uh, these guys are a further level um, jumpy, let's say, and they are very easy to startle even when feeding. My other death adders, for example, they will not leave their food, whatever you do. But if I do a sudden move with these guys, they will drop what they are eating and get into strike position. Uh, the one that you are seeing right now is the male. Uh, he is, the, in my opinion, the prettier of the two. Uh, with his red overall color and orange bands. The female is getting very dark. I think she's gonna shed one more time before she drops those babies. So um, she is darker. However, uh, she is also very pretty when she is not in shed. Now, what she is doing right now is to try to get to a safer place, I think, to um, feed because they actually live in a rack system and they are not used to this much open air and sunlight. So this is the reason why she's sliding backwards. The male is doing good. Let's focus on him for a little while. Um, as you can see, the scales of uh, this species is not killed at all. Uh, it's very smooth and they have this very smooth appearance. Um, that's why they are called, actually the common name is smooth scale death adder. Um, they share their um, territory with another death adder species, which is uh, Acanthophis rugosus which is the, um, basically the rough death adder or rough scale death adder. So that's how they differentiate these animals in um, Papua New Guinea. And the rough scale death adder has a, you know, killed appearance. Uh, hence, it looks rougher. Let's go back to the female again. So she's doing well. Um, these two snakes, they're actually siblings. 
Um, I did breed them, so I did breed their fun generation together. Uh, you know, it's as a geneticist, I don't like it to tell you the truth, but uh, these were a holdback couple and they were really nice looking, so I wanted to see if I get, get even nicer babies. But when I sell them, I will sell them as single animals because I don't want them to be inbred one more time. Um, but their parents uh, were wild cow individuals and they weren't related. As you can see, the female is doing a good job now uh, with her mouse. Again, the uh, death adders are elapids. I have mentioned this several times in my other videos and in the series. Um, however, they look like wipers and Papua New Guinea death adders share this as well as you can see they have slightly longer fangs they are somewhat mobile um, compared to very short fangs of other Australian elephants um, elliptical pupils short stout body ambush predator everything is the same uh, they just live in another area so the last dead adder that you have seen was the um, uh, Dajara desert death adder which are adapted very well for the desert environment. Uh, these guys, they live in a rainforest, a lush rainforest, hence they like a humid environment. And if you don't give them the humidity they require, uh, you will end up with shedding problems, etc. And I have to tell you, this is one thing you don't want to do, is hand peel an angry uh, smooth scale death adder. It will be a lot of trouble. It's good that I didn't startle them. You know, to tell you the truth, with this girl once, um, when I was closing her rack, she got startled and left her mouse, and she didn't eat that, and I found it three days later, this uh, horrible smell coming from somewhere in the snake room, I'm like, you know, I thought somebody uh, regurgitated their food, however, uh, nope, she just didn't eat, because she was... basically startled by my movements. Okay, the male is still in the middle as you can see, but the female is almost done. Let's zoom in. Of course, she's turning away from us as snakes tend to do when you're filming them. But it is what it is. Again, uh, look at this body. Towards the end, it's getting really full and you know I, I definitely think that she is gonna give birth soon so that's really nice um, you can always find home for little death adders people are interested in them and this pair is absolutely spectacular and red adders red death adders let's say um, are always in demand so it's good to supply captive bred animals so that's collecting from wild stops. Right, we're going back to the mail now. I really love his coloration. As you can see, he has this very orange. Uh, looking bands um, makes him really really beautiful and he is I would say maybe slightly calmer of the two uh, but he will still go berserk if you mess with him to tell you the truth again I don't know why this uh, different behavior exists between uh, the same within the species of the same genus that live in different places of the world. Um, maybe it's the population density of the Papua New Guinea area compared to Australia's outback, I don't know. Uh, but these guys are definitely, definitely um, trickier to deal with. You know, hooking them, hooking them with a uh, standard hook is also different. Uh, sometimes you actually need 
uh, sort of flat surface to be able to carry them from one place to another or at least two hooks uh, to try to balance because they tend to really get off the hook and jump and you know you don't want one of these guys on the floor angry at you uh, close to your feet. Again, uh, for those of you who are watching uh, this type of snakes for the first time, their venom is 100% neurotoxic, uh, which means they will attack to your uh, nerves and uh, the most common cause of death is not being able to breathe as your diaphragm muscle basically stops working properly. Uh, people who got bitten by these guys say that they feel like an elephant is sitting on their chest and they cannot take a breath in, uh, which I'm sure is a horrible way to go. So we are very careful. But the good thing is they are venomous post neurosynaptic, so the binding is reversible and anti-venom does a great job neutralizing the venom and you can get out of the hospital in a few hours perfectly fine if you get treated properly. And even if you cannot get anti-venom, uh, I have been told that acetylcholine esterases also work fine uh, as a competition uh, for binding with the venom and they also um, keep people alive until proper antivenom can be supplied. Alright? Again, if you see the males, they have these long tails and if you look at the females, their body ends abruptly and they have this short tail. And this is one way to easily sex the headers. You don't need to probe them or, or pop them or anything. That uh, tail shape is a very good indicator of the gender. Um, God, she really looks like a sausage, so um, I'm expecting babies soon. Alright, I hope you guys like this. I have one more species of mainland death adder to go through with you and hopefully um, we will end with that either next week or the week after. Take care. Bye.